Hey everybody, it's Gary Vaynerchuk and this is another episode of Overrated, Underrated with me, Gary Vee. Overrated or underrated, what does Gary think? Let's get into the show. Um, oh, okay, you gonna do something? I am gonna do something. You can keep that whole thing. Maybe we'll black it out. Like, as, Let's do a little ode there to, oh, to ask her. Yeah. I just want to give a shout out to DRock. Good to see you. Uh, this is a very special episode of Overrated Underrated. This is the sports card edition. One thing with the explosion of this show is I think I'm going to use it to answer the questions that I get bombarded with on text 212-931-5731, on DM, on social. I see it all, but I'm busy. I'm working all the time. I'm doing my personal life stuff. So like, it's hard to like answer them all. I'm going to use overrated, underrated occasionally as a catch-all. This is the sports card edition. PSA. PSA, uh, underrated. Uh, it is the establishment. As you know, DRock and others, I love SGC. I think there's a space for BGS. Uh, I think there's some other emerging players. I do think long term maybe there's a computer that comes along and takes the humans out of it. But the group that just bought PSA is some professional ass motherfuckers and I expect big things from them and I'm a big fan as you know. I'm betting on the, the jockey over the horse. If you go back to that Jack Welsh post, maybe we'll pop that up right here, that I posted on Instagram the other day when we talked about Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Big balls. Oh. <laughs> Love them. Big hairy balls. Oh God. In 2015, we just both loved them because we were betting on the jockey. It continued to play out. I believe in the jockeys that now run PSA. For everybody who's watching this, PSA is the grading company, that we can throw an image here and circle it, that is like, they grade cards on a 10 point scale. This is like the most respected grading company, uh, the leader in this space, and so I think it's underrated because I think there's new leadership that will make it stronger, and I'm excited to see what happens. Alternative rookies. Alternative rookies are grossly, grossly, grossly underrated. Let's do some editing in this one. I'm obsessed with the Nike and Interlake Jordan. I'm obsessed with uh, the messy sticker. I'm obsessed with, um, Jesus, I'm trying to think of like, there's a weird Stockton rookie card from Europe that's a year before his rookie. There's a, there's a, a, a donut version of, um, of a Pippen rookie card from 87, not 88. There's the Barkley JMS from 85, not 86. When there's, a, there's the Hank Aaron rookie card, the cookies. There's, there's these alternative rookie cards that there's a Pat Riley Jack in the Box you know, these weird companies, I view them as contemporary art. I think what you're living through now with sports cards is the Pablo, is like kind of like the, the old school European art, the Jordans, the Mona Lisa shit, the Jordans, the mantles. But I think as this industry explodes, people are gonna look at supply and demand. And if you look at the supply of these weird rookie cards, there's so much less than the established tops and clear version. So all it needs is demand. And as people get bored, and as people get creative, and as other dynamics happen, as other people get excited about things, this always happens in every sector. I think alternative rookie cards are some of the biggest money makers in cards. Stickers. Stickers, it's funny, I just mentioned the messy thing. Like, I'm a big fan of the sticker culture. In Europe, it's very simple. Stickers, Panini stickers, and others, but mainly Panini stickers. European, Soccer cards are actually stickers, right? And so, to me, as soccer, proper football gets bigger in the US, the predominantly market, you see it with the Mbappe sticker, right? You see it with other stickers, Maradona, ZZ, you know, you see it with other stickers, they're exploding. So I think stickers in general interesting, specifically for me, NBA stickers, because the Luca Zion, all that stuff, the stickers, pretty rare, hard to grade, much tinier marketplace than the cards. I think stickers in general continue to get bigger because, and I'm not talking 86, 87 Fleer Jordan stickers, which were stickers and cards. I mean actually stickers, standalone stickers. I like that whole space quite a bit because I think European proper football culture continues to matter. Those are stickers. And so I think stickers are sneaky. Underrated, underrated. Luca Base Prism PSA 10. Luca base Prism PSA 10. Um, what's the population on that? 26,214, 15,375 PSA 10s. One more time, how many PSA 10s? 15,000. 15,000. What I'm asking for is the population. How many are there perfectly graded by the top company PSA? 15,000. So I think about supply and demand. 
the pro- this one's a very hard one for me, similar to just rating Zion in the last episode, the human, not the card. I think Luka's so good and will fall into that top 20 players of all time category if he doesn't get hurt, Derrick Rose, right? That I'm scared to say overrated, but I'm scared about the population because there's 15,000 plus of these. There's still a ton in wax. Took about 25,000 probably in circulation. That takes a lot of demand. There's also a ton of other Luka cards, including the super premiums that we didn't have for Barkley, Akeem, Ewing, other top 50 players where there's only the Fleer rookie. In the next three years, it could be underrated, but I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with properly rated because even though long, long term, I think it could be overrated, he just might end up being so good that 25,000's not enough against the supply against the demand. 2018 Panini Prism, Kylan Mbappe. The Mbappe Prism rookie, uh, I think that's grossly overrated. I think soccer, grossly overrated. I think soccer stickers is the culture and will be the culture. And I think that's the rookie card. The Mbappe First Prism, what's the population on that? But 2,309 Yeah, I'm, I'm not as high on that. A lot of people, people are obsessed with Prism in general. I'm a little less obsessed with Prism. It's an incredible product, I'm about it, but I'm gonna go with overrated. Even though I think Mbappe is an incredible talent as a soccer player, prop football player. Marvel cards. Marvel cards are underrated. I think comic book cards is something I'm starting to try to, oh by the way, I wanna give how many I have of these cards. I think that'd be good transparency. So start one more time, PSA, no. You mean the Luca base? Luca base, I think I have 183 of those. But if you remember, throwback, the throwback video. When is she quiet? This card was $35 when I started buying it a year ago. That Luca rookie's now 75. I bought, I was telling everybody on social media only 30 days ago to buy them, they were 40. Wow. It is now over $400, TikTok. Sports cards are coming. Get educated, get cash. I bought almost all of them for under $70 a piece. As a matter of fact, I've never paid over $70 for the Luca. So throw back a little video there. So I have about 185 of those. Um, what was the next card? Island and Mbappe. Mbappe have none, but I have like 10 or 15 of stickers. But you know, a lot of this is gonna be, I'm buying the way I believe. Marvel cards. Marvel cards I have like, I have like six random weird things I bought which were like stickers from the 70s. None of the modern 90, 91 stuff. Uh, but I think it's underrated and I think I'm about to start doing some real investigation because I think, you know, listen, like I've said that Charizard can't tear his ACL, the Hulk, Batman, Superman, there's some 1940s Superman cards I'm starting to look at. I, I think in general, DC and Marvel comic book cards can have a moment. Underrated. 2001 Upper Deck Tiger Woods. 2001 Upper Deck Tiger Woods, I have 100 BGS 9.5s, just trying to give my transparency. I think, you know, you're catching me right in between the week, I'm sure we'll probably post this next week, which means the documentary on HBO is done because the second part comes out this Sunday. Um, and we'll probably put this out on Tuesday, so it just ended. I think there was a, because of the Last Dance documentary, everybody wants to buy cards before documentaries. Last Dance was a phenomenon. I think super long term, that card, what's the pub? Population on that? 21,323. <sighs> and then there's. 9,000 PSA tags. Yeah, I, I think it's overrated. I'm gonna go with overrated. I think, especially right now, I think super long term it can work out. I do think the Sports Illustrated version and the SP authentic versions are gonna be the ones for Tiger. It's Tiger. If he gets weirdly hot again and wins a couple more majors, but I'm gonna go with overrated. All right, Tyler Hero Prism Rookie. Uh, PSA, uh, PSA 10. PSA 10 is 2830. So a couple things. I think Tyler Hero is super fun. I think he's swaggy as shit. I think he's a real good ball player. I'm gonna go with aggressively, aggressively, aggressively overrated and I'm gonna use this opportunity to make a bigger point. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest vulnerability in sports cards right now is rookie chasing for people that wanna sit on it a little bit longer than within three and six and nine and 12 week windows. Ray Allen, Kevin Garnett, Allen Iverson, Tracy McGrady, um, I can go on and on, Tim Duncan, who's a top fucking 12 player of all time. Um, John Stockton, Reggie Miller. Like, if you look at the data around how much, how much is a hero? 230 bucks or something like that? 
Right now, because people are day trading, buying and flipping, buying and flipping, buying and flipping, these young players. LaMelo Ball's gonna go through his throat, I think he's a baller. Like, it's gonna be this thing. I also hate that year. Is that, that's last year, right? Yeah. Uh, Panini, yeah. yeah. Panini made a trillion of them. It's the same reason Morant and Zion, I, I don't like the whole thing. I don't like the rookie spec thing at all that's going on for this reason. 90% of the people that are being bought right now this last four years, somebody's gonna get held with the bag. Like Jason Tatum is a baller. Is he gonna be one of the 25 greatest players of all time? Because if he's not, then his rookie card in 12 years is gonna be a real fucking problem. AKA, somebody's gonna pay a lot more today that it's gonna be worth a lot less in 12 years. If he wins a championship next year and is the guy and you buy it today and you sell it that night, you're gonna make money. Donovan Mitchell, Tatum, like J- Jalen Brown, like there, there's so many great young players, right? Trey Young, like they're loaded, there's so much talent. The problem is look at Barkley and Malone and Ewing and Elijah one and Duncan and like Shaq. Look at Shaquille fucking O'Neal, culturally and actual player. He was also a rookie during high production years and his cards are not expensive. Tyler Hero rookie cards are more than Shaq fucking rookie cards in the same production. And even, I, I, I'm going up to my head, I bet you if you look at the pops on certain Shaq PSA 10s, like the tops regular and the fucking stadium club and the upper deck versus Tyler Hero prisms, Tyler Hero's more expensive. And there's still a ton of Tyler Hero in wax Tyler Hero's not gonna end up being a better all-time player than Shaquille O'Neal. I'm ready to put that down right now. I think people are gonna get crushed when the momentum goes the other way. I think day trading day to day, and you know what's going on in sports, you know who's hurt, who's got an opportunity, that's fun. But I hate the long-term nature of the majority of the rookies speculating across the board. Of course there'll be four to five guys that become Kobe's, LeBron's, two or three guys that become Kobe, LeBron, Shaq's, Tim Duncan's. You have to really hit it. You gotta really get Mike Trout or LeBron. Otherwise, you know, look at how inexpensive Dwayne Wade and Carmelo Anthony are. Most of these, almost 98% of these rookies will not be better than Carmelo Anthony all time on the top 500 list. 2003 and top scrum LeBron James. Grossly underrated. I have 53 of them. Um, I didn't pay over 1,100 for any of them. I think they're 20,000 now. Um, gonna be a hundred thousand dollar card one day. LeBron James and Michael Jordan. How many are there? Two thousand? Four hundred or something like that? There's twenty one thousand overall. PSA tens I mean. Three seventeen. No no that's Jordan eighty six. I'm talking about LeBron. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Two thousand wow. I'm on my shit. Wow. Two thousand eighty three. Right. Right. So to me, I know two thousand sixty three people that are gonna want a LeBron perfect PSA 10 Chrome rookie over the next decade. People, I've got 53 of them. Other people got like, like that card's going to the moon. Michael Jordan PSA 10, 1980. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Michael Jordan more than anybody. I own two, I think. I might have three, um, uh, which is the biggest mistake I've made in the three years I've been in because I've been yelling. You can watch videos three years ago. I fucked this up. Um, I paid 30K for mine. Um, there's 317 of them. It's $230,000. I'd be stunned if it's not a million dollars. The most underrated card. It is the Mona Lisa Modern. It is um, a big regret I have for not having more. Golf cards. Golf cards are underrated. You know, because outside of Tiger, I don't even know what a Phil Mickelson rookie looks like in my eyes or Johnson. Spieth or whoever is like rocking there. So I'm gonna go with slightly underrated. I think all cards, Garbage Pail Kids, Batman, the A-Team, golf, you know, I, I think all of it right at this second underrated in a three year window. Wrestling cards. Grossly underrated. I think the Bumblebee, uh, Dwayne Rock Johnson, I think I own two of those. Um, PSA 10, which I think there's 30 of, which is like now 14,000. I think it's massively underpriced. Talk about a six figure card. These guys are in culture. They're also, Hulk Hogan and Andre Giant are much more the Hulk and Batman than they are Hank Aaron and Roberto Clemente. I think wrestling cards, great community in wrestling. If wrestling has like 16 to 25 people in the wrestling community get hardcore about cards, 
That's a big ecosystem of diehards that I think come in hard. I think wrestling is actually very underpriced. 2019 Panini Prism, Zion Williamson. Grossly, grossly overpriced. What's the production? Uh, overrated. 26,926, 14,673. Massively. I'm more confident that Luca's a top 15 player than Zion at the second. It's just too much inventory. Like, these guys have to go on to become one of the 15 best players of all time to make these numbers work. I think the Zion's like seven, 800 bucks, it's been a thousand, like, I don't see it, Garnett. Like, is Zion gonna be better than Garnett all time? I think so, but like, I'm not confident. I, I just think there's way too much risk. There's so many places to spend $700 better today. So many places. You know, we've talked about, it. I think one of the underrated places is that 90s era that, you know, Garnett, Ray Allen, Iverson, Manu Ginova. There's, there's some cheap good deals there compared to these youngsters. Who I love, great kids, but fuck. 2003, Mega Krakens, Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo. There's so few of these Ronaldo and Messi cards. Let's do a lot of imaging, post image so everybody can see this. How much is it, do you know? I don't know. How, there's so few, right? We don't know the yeah. uh, population. Um, there's 38 PSA 10. Yeah, I mean, under, under, underrated. He's one of the 10 best proper football players of all time. He's culturally relevant. Soccer cards are gonna continue to go up. It's a good chunk below Messi, if I recall. I haven't looked recently, but I'm gonna go underpriced. 2013 top bloodline Conor McGregor auto. Underpriced. I think UFC cards are underpriced. I bought two of those UFC Connors recently, um, and I think UFC cards are underpriced. UFC is a MMA is a huge sport for a long time. Like I think people haven't gotten there yet. I think UFC is a place to go. There's only 36. Population 27. It's a really interesting card. 2018 top update Juan Soto. I think properly priced. I think there's a ton of inventory there as well. I think it's cheap though compared to the basketball stuff. And I think Soto could be the best player. He could be one of the 17 best players of all time. He's young, Derrick Rose again. But I'm gonna go with underpriced. I, I like that card a lot. I like Soto a lot. Uh, I have 25 of those I think at this point. Maybe more, I don't, maybe 75. Luca's mother is autic. <laughs> I think that's an underrated story. This is like a rumor that goes around that Luca's mom signed his cards his rookie year, not him. I don't. I, I really haven't done. I, I don't get excited about conspiracy theories, so I don't have really a lot of info. But it's an underrated story. Kaboom inserts. Kaboom inserts are underrated. This has been the biggest thing that my brother AJ has invested in. I think 85% of AJ's behavior is kaboom. I've got probably a mix of like 35, 40 kabooms, mainly basketball 2013. Um, I do have a bunch of Sam Darnold kabooms, so I've got a lot riding on Sammy. Um, but probably only like 40 or 50 overall. Kaboom is an insert that's extremely rare. They've got the comic book element, they've got the supply and demand element, they've got the heat on the street. I, kaboom's like, you, you know what Kaboom is? I can see like Michael B. Jordan, the actor, being like, I'm gonna get into this, be like, oh, these Kabooms are fresh, right? Like, I can see like the baby being like, all right, Gary Vee, like, and I'll be like, here's what you should buy, Jordan. And he'll be like, fuck it, I'm gonna get these Kabooms, they're fucking fresh. They're like, they're icy. Um, they're the one. The Kaboom insert to me is the one. I think they're grossly underpriced. I think with the comic book and the and how rare they are, as people get educated about Kaboom, I think that's the one. Uh, 2017 Prism Patrick Mahomes. I own none of those, regrettably. Mm. What's what's the population of, of the PSA 10? 849. Yeah, it's under. I think it's underpriced. I think Patrick Mahomes, barring injury, um, becomes one of the best quarterbacks, if not top three quarterbacks of all time. Um, I'm pretty sad I don't have any of those. 1979 OPG. OPG. Grossly underpriced. I, I mean, are we seeing the PSA 10? Yeah, I mean, aren't there three of them or two? Yeah, I mean, somebody just paid over a million for it. If in 10 years, if that's a $10 million card, that would make sense to me. I think it's grossly underpriced. He's the greatest hockey player of all time. Super rare, there's only two in the world. You get into Mona Lisa shit, underpriced. Card funds. Card funds are underrated. I don't think people realize how many people are circling around raising five, 10, 15 million dollars that are gonna lead to 10 million dollar Wayne Gretzky, gonna lead to Kabooms being 10X, lead to Jordan being a million. I think card funds, real capital, Wall Street life, 
you know, I'm not involved in any. I have, I don't know any real detail, but I know I get emailed all the time. Like, I am Stanley Thompson from Merrill Lynch. We are putting together a $10 million fund to buy sports cars. Would you like? And I'm trying to stay very omni. It's why I'm trying to be pr- transparent with my how, what my holdings are, my opinions here. But if you look at all my videos, I think I've been ridiculously historically correct. Um, and uh, and I feel like card funds are underrated. I don't think people understand the financial impact of $400 million coming into the market trying to get the top 10% of stuff. The bubble. The bubble is underrated in the reverse. This is why everything is in detail, right? Like I think, I think like at any moment, you know, Pokemon can come out, uh, video games can come out, like things change. Something might capture the attention of all these people. Comic books, graded video games, like, you know, you gotta always pay attention to that. You should always be worried you're in a bubble, which means you don't mortgage the house, you're smart. You're thoughtful, you do things that you like, things you can afford. Every card I own, I make pretend I go to zero. And I think people have to do that. Don't underestimate the bubble. Because that shit will pop on your face. 1961, Lear Oscar Robinson. <laughs> Did John Morganson have anything to do with this list? I'm, yeah, he all the time. <laughs> I love it. Um, I own probably about nine or 10 of these, maybe 12, uh, under 20 for sure. Um, uh, listen, I think vintage is under, I, 61 Fleer basketball, 70 tops basketball, 72 tops basketball, the Jordan Magic Bird. I, I think vintage basketball is wildly underpriced. I've got a three year broken record on this. So I'm gonna go in general. Are we saying which PSA or is it just that card? There's one PSA type. Yeah, I mean, that's stupid. That's, one out of the 100 total. Yeah, it's a, I think the top 20, the top 50 players in the NBA in history are collectively underpriced. And Oscar 61 is one of those cards. That's, you know, the 48 Mike in. Those cards are just gonna keep. Everyone's like, oh, my Dr. J hasn't gotten as much as this thing. I'm like, sure, but like. 2003 top Chrome Dwayne Ray. Wait. How many are those PSA 10s are there? Uh, 654. Do you know how much it is right now? No. Cool. I think Dwayne Wade's underpriced because of what I think he's up to post career. I think he's a top 100 player and I think he's culturally relevant. If Dwayne Wade ended up being President of the United States of America, that would not surprise me based on his humanity, his amazingness as a human. Oh, by the way, I own probably four or five of these. Um, uh, His culture, he's just a leader. Him and his wife, his family, I just, I think he's underpriced. So I'm gonna go with underrated. eBay. Under, under, underrated, it's the fucking most important platform and StockX is doing a nice job, people are selling direct, discords, but like eBay's the fucking industry, it's, it's the data. Sports card value in 2026. Sports card value in 2026. Underrated in the super premium, low pop, vintage, or three, four best players, the Trouts and the LeBrons of their generation. 2026, Uh overrated on a lot of this thing that I'm trying to explain to people. There's a lot of speculating going on. Some kid can have one good night and people are like, Buy. I think people are gonna get burned. This is exactly what happened in 92 to 94. Get thoughtful. Unless you're day trading, then that's different. Buy a kid, gets hot for a week. Devontae Graham, you can make money, I get it. That's the show, hope you learned something. See ya. There's 2,830 Tyler Hero PSA 10s. Yeah. There's an unbelievable amount of packs still in the world, so we're probably another 4X, so we'll get to 10,000, but let's even say it's at this number, 2,800. There's 1,944 Shaquille O'Neal's, right? So there's, right, so right. So there's a good chunk, less. 2,800 you said there? Yeah, 2,830. Right, so there's like a 25% less Shaq's, mm-hmm. and Shaq is $380, and Tyler Hero's 230. And like when you take in the VIG, like that makes no sense. Mm-hmm. That's the problem. There's 315 Shack upper deck, uh, excuse me, stadium upper deck bases, and there's only 315 of them, and it's two twenty six hundred bucks. Like Shack is either stupid, stupid, stupid underpriced, or Tyler Hero, Luca, Trey, like all these guys are just wildly overpriced. Ja, Jaron Jackson, like that's the problem. Supply and demand. 
YouTube watcher, what's up? It's Gary V. First of all, thank you so much. I hope you're doing super well during these times. Uh, I also want to ask you, please subscribe because my commitment and exploration of YouTube is about to explode. Stories, polls, more content, more engagement, more surprise and delight. This is the time to subscribe. I hope you consider it and I hope I see you soon.